give people a chance to log on. Bright rays of the sun are shining straight through that red in the lint window. It's yeah, almost your, blinding. Yeah, your face got a red tint to it. <laughs> I've been transfigured. <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> we got some folks logging on now. Yeah, got 15. Very good. Great. Always good to know. One of my big nightmares is that we would run a Facebook live service and no one logged on. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. As we get prepared for the liturgy of the first Sunday of Lent, I was remarking that the brilliant sun outside is shining through the red portion of the Lent um, colored window. And... Uh, it's shining up on my face and making me look, um, uh, let's say, radiant with the sunlight. How about that? So uh, I cannot believe how beautiful the sun is after all of these days and nights of rain, rain, rain. We're going to be talking about that a little bit today. And I'm thinking of the song from the Beatles, uh, Here Comes the Sun. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. It seems like years since it's been here. But here comes the sun, and it's all right. Let's uh, enjoy our worship today. Uh, Lent does not mean that we're sad. It simply means we're focused on some things that I'll be talking about a little bit later. Uh, it's time now for Jeff to ring the bell and for Ward to offer us his uh, introduction music so that we can contemplate and prepare our hearts and get ready.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, our opening hymn is Christ when for us we were baptized. It's hymn number 121, verses 1, 2, and 4.
while Tim gets ready to read, I want to just welcome Karen, Deacon Karen, back to our midst and to be able to serve at the altar once again. And uh, she has been deeply involved in the loving care, daily care for her husband, our friend Deacon Bill, who has since gone on to be with the Lord. And now it's time for her to return. And we're so glad that you're able to be with us again, Karen. So <laughs> We're going to continue now with our first reading. This is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which he also went and made a pro proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity now to enter into a Lent, a time apart, a time out in the wilderness, as it were, where we can be strengthened like steel is strengthened by fire and heat. Help us always to be able to depend upon the angels who minister to us in these times. Prepare us to receive the light of the resurrection. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, how great it is to have Karen back and to hear a deacon once again proclaiming the gospel, which is one of their chief ministries in the church. Not that Jeff, you or I aren't able to proclaim the gospel because people might not realize that 
Before we were priests, we were ordained deacons, and once a deacon, always a deacon. So anyway, but it's great to hear you once again, Karen. Thank you for being back here with us. Well, so yesterday I did something that I had been longing to do. What I did precisely was to appricate. I appricated yesterday as I sat in a chair in the lawn in the beautiful sunshine because the word apricity means to bask or to enjoy the warmth of the sun in winter. Apricity, to enjoy the warmth of the sun in winter. So I basked in the sun. The fancy word for that is I appricated. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. The first reading today, which was not read, but I will tell you just a little bit about it, is from Genesis chapter 9. When God said to Noah, after the flood and after the ark had rested atop Mount Ararat, he said, as for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, domestic animals, and every animal of the earth, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. You couldn't have told that the other day. This is the sign of the covenant that I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and earth. The rainbow. It's a sign of God's covenant. To be precise, it was the Noahic covenant after Noah. A unilateral, one-way promise given with no conditions. A promise never again to destroy the earth with a flood. Forty days of clouds and flood. And when the clouds break, it is like an Easter moment of new beginnings. The rainbow was a promise of God's grace requiring nothing from us. God has been grieved as then and now over the way we humans behave toward one another but he promises his grace. He promises grace. And perhaps you remember the old saying that grace is an acronym for great riches at Christ's expense. Great riches at Christ's expense. In the beginning, in the Mark reading today, we start to get an understanding of the great expense that God underwent in Christ in order to give us grace. Our opening hymn says, Christ went for us, you were baptized, God's Spirit on you came, as peaceful as a dove, and yet as urgent as a flame. After his baptism, the scriptures tell us, and as I've always said, that Mark is the Reader's Digest version of the Gospel, it says that the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was tempted by Satan. When you hear the word driven, that is an urgent word. You may think of forced compulsion as by a foreman's lash. But I submit that since God is love, according to St. John, Jesus was driven into the wilderness by an urgent love. A flame of love. Love caused him to take our place, not only upon the cross, but in all of our suffering. It's another 40 days and 40 nights of clouds and coldness coming against the spirit of humanity in that wilderness. Jesus appeared in the wilderness as the representative of the human race, of all of us. He bears within himself the experience of the human predicament in its raw intensity. The temptations of Satan are allowed by God to help us confront our own evil tendencies. The monk Thomas Keating wrote, If relatives and friends fail to bring out the worst in us, Satan is always around to finish the job. 
In the desert, Jesus is tempted by the primitive instincts of human nature, security and survival, affection and esteem, the desire to control defense and to have power over others. All of those stem from our basic human needs. And as we dismantle our emotional programs for happiness, then the obstacles of the risen life of Jesus to the risen life of Jesus can fall away. And our hearts can then be prepared for the infusion of God's divine life at Easter. Like the sun, the other day, as I soaked it up into my skin on an otherwise dark and cold winter season. This is the whole point of Lent, to prepare ourselves by giving up ourselves like Jesus did in order to perceive genuine and lasting life, authentic resurrection life. On this first Sunday of Lent, we're invited into the desert with Jesus to confront the basic framework of our human condition. Last week, we saw Jesus transfigured on the mountaintop. And what this means is that the divine source of his human personality poured out through every pore of his body in the form of light. This was the fruit of his having struggled with temptation and becoming free from the old systems of self-preservation and promotion in order to embrace and be in full contact with the ultimate reality that is God. Back in the time of Noah, God looked forward through the history of mankind and based on the for us work that Jesus had committed to do, promised to meet every shortcoming, every error, every willful disobedience, every hardness of our hearts, every sadness with grace. In this wilderness, Jesus proved that he is the for us God. In three short years, he was crucified. He was born for us. He was baptized for us. He was forced into the wilderness for us. He was tempted by Satan for us. He proclaimed the kingdom of God for us. He was flogged for us. He was mocked for us. He was crucified for us. He descended into hell for us. And our passage from 1 Peter says that Jesus went and made the proclamation to those in prison who at the time of Noah did not listen. When our creed says he descended into hell, he didn't just descend into hell to go there for a visit. He went and brought the good news of the kingdom to those who had been asleep, who had not known life until the moment that he crashed down the gates of hell. And proclaim life to all those who had been trapped in death. He rose again then for us. He ascended into heaven for us. And all this brings back us to the rainbow that promises light out of the darkness and the coldness of the clouds. I think this is why the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, before his earthly ministry even began. I think this is why Jesus had these 40 days apart, to learn to face down the adversary, which is what the word Satan means, the devil, so that he might be prepared to do this over and over again in his three years of earthly ministry. I suppose those wild beasts took the place of the Pharisees and the clueless disciples. Those wild beasts took the place for Roman occupation, the struggles of hungry and hurting people in the world. Those wild beasts even represented death itself, all of which Jesus would confront 
before he was nailed to a cross. I think that the presence of those angels that were ministering to him during those 40 days also helped him to recognize the gifts of God that walked along beside him through the entire challenge of it all. I think those 40 days were essential to everything that would follow in Jesus' life. And if Jesus needed them, how much more do you and I need those times apart to prepare to face down everything in this world which would also tempt us to despair? How much more do you and I need practice in learning how to recognize and rely on the angels' gifts from God which are all so ours through it all. These 40 days of Lent are a gift of the church to prepare us for all these Lenten times throughout the year from time to time. Let's not turn down the chance to spend a little more time intentionally walking with Jesus who promises to be our strength and our hope when great riches at Christ's expense are so desperately needed. I saw recently on the Episcopal News Service a story about a congregation that was planning an upbeat Lent. That congregation was so tired of the entire drag ever since last Lent when this whole pandemic started and we, and we shut down services. All of our plans were put on a lengthy hold. They are so ready for this to be over. I'm going to stay in contact with them to see exactly what they mean by an upbeat Lent. I know what they mean. I want to see how they flesh it out. I also read another article on the Episcopal News Service that says, Episcopalians prepare for second COVID-19 restricted Lent. Now that sounds more like reality. With priests planning, I'm quoting now, Self-imposed ashes on Ash Wednesday, drive-by palm distribution on Palm Sunday, Monday Thursday services on Zoom, coinciding with family dinners, online stations of the cross for Good Friday, outdoor Easter vigils, and on and on. In my 33 years as a priest, I can tell you I never expected to be holding a Shrove Tuesday pancake supper on Zoom in front of a computer screen with members of my congregation. It was different, but it was also a sweet time of fellowship. It has all felt so much like a wilderness, but the angels have been there to minister to us the grace we needed to make it through. And so this led on opening my heart to God's answer to the question, what are you preparing us for, Lord? We who are not used to so much daily challenge for so long, this Lent then, Lord, make us ready. I think it is for the glory of the coming sunlight, which today and yesterday were a foretaste and a promise for a new life ahead. And then also that we never forget this time in our common life together. That despite it all, God has been with us and in it with us and has brought us through. Like the children of Israel after 40 years of journey in the desert, as they were on the edge of the promised land, God told them, teach this to your children and to your children's children. This will be forever etched in our psyche as a, as a people that we will pass along to our children. Yes, it was tough. Yes, we had to walk uphill both ways in the snow to school. Yes, it was unbearable. Yes, it was frightening. Yes, all those things. But in it, we found God present all the time, all the time. I think of those poor people in Texas who are finally living again above the freezing point and can begin to have power restored to their homes and can begin to have drinking water once again. 
who have had a real ordeal. And believe me, they will remember this year and how God brought them through. And so, when I was applicating yesterday in the beautiful sunshine, I played on my phone as I do usually every spring. But I played the Beatles song from Abbey Road, 1969, George Harrison, Here Comes the Sun. Here comes the sun. It's all right. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it feels like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun, and it's all right. Little darling, the smiles returning to the faces. Little darling, it seems like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. Little darling, I feel that ice is slowly melting. Little darling, it seems like years since it's been clear. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. Miss Lynn, you and I together have an opportunity to prepare our hearts for the sun to shine. And with it, such an appreciation in our heart of hearts that we are now being released from this kind of darkness are living once again in the light of Christ. Amen. We now recite together once again, as is the practice of God's people all around the world, when we say together the Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God in the pain of from being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under our despite. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people, Form 5, uh, which has a simple response at the end of each prayer, which is, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault. At the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our for Michael, our presiding bishop, for our standing committee, for all bishops and other ministers, 
and for all the holy people of God. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Jesus Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joe, our president, and Henry, our governor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially Sandra, Jenna Rose, Seth, Reverend Moore, Elaine, Tim, Dan, Nanita, Jonathan, Sarah, Jake, Faith, Carol, Janice, Logan, Patty, Al, Phyllis, Joan, Matt, <clears throat> Irene, Edward, Donna, and Tracy. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Martha Shaw and all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone with all the saints, that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. George, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray to you now also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole world. And have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and will not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we 
You may stand. All things come of thee, O Lord. And thy name have given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but to live for him who died for us, and rose again. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Now as our Savior Christ has told, uh, taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. He said, My own peace I give to you. Not as the world gives a greeting do I give to you peace. So let not your hearts be troubled and neither be afraid. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our worship now continues with our, our final hymn, 559, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, verses 1 and 3. Thanks be to God. God.